it seems that the majority of major US defense projects, after spending billions of dollars, just end up failing. Prices skyrocket and the program is cancelled, all just for a new project to start up and go through that same cycle again. Whether it's the $22.5 billion spent on the Zumwalt class destroyers, which ended production after just three ships whose main guns don't even work, or the billions spent on the XM-2001 Crusader self-propelled artillery vehicle, the XM-1202 MCS tank, the failed Comanche stealth helicopter, or the many, many laser weapons that just end up failing to ever become operational. Why can't the US military get anything right? Why do all these projects seem to fail? But first, our sponsor, NordVPN. Your internet traffic is constantly open to attack. NordVPN is a reliable service that encrypts your internet traffic from hackers, snoopers, and any other nefarious group trying to steal your data. They do this by using double data encryption from 5,500 servers, all to ensure that your data stays private. They also go one step further than most other VPN services. Normally, the provider you use for internet service can detect whether you're using a VPN. Nord is able to obfuscate this by using servers to hide that fact. They do this by actively stripping all the information off the data that you send. And this is just one of the many, many features that they offer. And they're always highly recommended by tech and security experts, along with winning multiple awards for their product. So go, try them out, and use my link down in the description. With it, you'll get a huge discount, plus an additional month for free. And, as always, they have their 30-day money-back guarantee to ensure that you are satisfied with their service. Don't leave your data out in the open for anyone to see and exploit, which unfortunately these days is all too common. So again, that's NordVPN. It really seems every time the US tries to replace a weapon system with a new one, like the Arleigh Burke class destroyer with a Zumwalt, the M1 Abrams tank with the XM-1202, the Patriot air defense system with Meads, and countless more, it fails. And depending on how pessimistic you are, you can even add in the F-35, which has had a long list of problems and massive cost overruns. One simple explanation lies in the complexity of modern technology and at the incredible rate that technology is advancing. Everything today has computers in it. By the time a project goes through design, through development, into testing, and finally about to become operational, those computers are outdated. And even without the concern of outdated software, all the complex electrical needs of modern weaponry makes design that much more difficult. A new aircraft back in World War II, for example, really just needed to be aerodynamic and have a powerful engine. But today, you need that but also often with some degree of stealth, extremely intricate computers all networked together, millions of lines of code without a single error, integrated sensors and weapons along with a navigation system all working perfectly in sync, and all of this operating perfectly in conjunction. One single issue in any one of these systems can affect others, requiring reworking of the whole aircraft, again creating massive cost overruns and the threat of it just being cancelled altogether. Many systems just seem to be made overcomplicated, even going back to older things like the Hawk surface-to-air missile system. For it to work, it required the actual missile launchers and vehicles to tow them, but also a command post, generators, an IFF transceiver, a CWAR search radar, an HPIR engagement radar, an ROR radar for range, sometimes a PAR pulse acquisition radar, and additional facilities for its crew. Compare this to the Soviet Union's similar mobile system, the 2K-12 Cub, or the SA-6. This pretty much simply required the launchers, which were self-propelled, and a search and engagement radar. That added complexity of Hawk gave it some pretty incredible capabilities, but at the cost of flexibility, mobility, additional manpower, and all the extra systems required just to work. This extra complexity the US often adds can make developing new systems just a nightmare. All that extra equipment just means so many more things could go wrong which again, leads to cost overruns and often cancellation. To some extent, this is a problem that all nations militaries face in creating new hardware, but it's really something that the US seems to make worse for themselves. Every new weapon system designed in the US is just made so much more complex. They want everything to be integrated. This is an incredible advantage when it works, giving unmatched levels of situational awareness, flexibility, and early warning of any potential threat, but when it doesn't work, it makes fixing it costly and sometimes not even worth it. Another issue comes down to the political system the US has. Defense budgets need to be voted on before being approved. This leads, at times, politicians to withhold their vote unless it benefits their state or district, bringing jobs and money to the people they represent, which in turn helps them get reelected. For example, again, that F-35 has parts built in 45 different states. And this isn't the most efficient, adding further costs, which in turn can lead to eventually canceling. Also, defense contractors are not only trying to keep politicians happy to win government contracts, but their only potential customer is the government. Research and development of state-of-the-art technology is expensive. 
Apple reportedly spent nearly $3 billion developing the first iPhone, for example. But they have been able to sell billions of iPhones, so that development cost is spread out and recovered, adding only a dollar or so to each phone. Defense contractors can't sell their latest guided missile destroyers to the general public. Their customer base is so small that that initial development cost can't be spread out, which greatly increased prices. On top of that, all research, development, testing, and all technical data has to be kept hidden and secure, as it's classified, further complicating and adding cost. So, if you hadn't noticed by now, it all comes down to cost. Rising cost is the main reason projects will be cancelled. Further adding to cost, one issue I think that is more widespread than reported by the media is corruption. I've talked about people like Darlene Duryoung, who was the Principal Deputy Undersecretary of the Air Force for acquisition. She ended up pleading guilty in 2004 to a felony charge of corruption when she manipulated the Small Diameter Bomb Project, the KC-46 Tanker Project, and others so that Boeing would win the government contract, all in exchange for Boeing hiring her daughter, and later, when she left the Air Force, hiring her with a quarter million dollar a year salary plus a massive signing bonus. Duryan was sentenced to prison, so was Boeing's CFO Michael Sears, and the event forced the resignation of the CEO of Boeing, Phil Condit. And this is a problem that affects the entire US government, not just limited to defense. Anytime you mix government with the private sector, you get extremely tempting conditions for corruption. I remember in my hometown just a few years ago, we had the so-called Buffalo Billions Project. Over a billion dollars of government money would be invested to rebuild and help the city's economy. However, it was just full of corruption. Building contracts reportedly went straight to companies who donated massive amounts of money to and held fundraisers for the governor's re-election campaign. Multiple people, including the top eight of the governor, were arrested and charged. It's just any situation where you have people in power who want money, whether it's a politician or the head of acquisitions for a branch of the US military that wants an extra payday, and people with money who want power, like a CEO wanting a lucrative government contract. Corruption is just bound to happen. And this all adds further cost to the system. Going back to Darlene Deerjung, the small diameter bomb project was rigged for Boeing. She did this by removing requirements, like the ability to hit a moving target. Boeing's proposal could not do that, so removing it allowed Boeing to win. So, after years of development and finally production of the small diameter bomb, they had to start a whole new project called the Small Diameter Bomb 2, now called Stormbreaker, which would again put the ability to hit a moving target back in. This new project cost, at least from what I could find, an extra 700 plus million dollars just in research, development, and testing. All just to redo what the original project was set out to do in the first place. And this is just what we know from court cases. We don't know how much more things like this go on behind the scenes. And finally, it seems that often, the US government doesn't know what it wants. During the Cold War, it was easy. The potential enemy was the Soviet Union, so you needed weapons that could specifically defeat their weapons. If the Soviet Union came out with a new air defense system, you built an aircraft that could beat it. But after the collapse of the USSR, the US military had really no direction. Things like the B-2 bomber or the Seawolf-class submarines, built to go up against the most capable modern Soviet weaponry, cut production. Of the original 132 B-2s planned, only 21 were built, and the Seawolf-class was cut back from 29 to just 3. In the 1990s and early 2000s, there was no major military power the US had to worry about, or build new weapons with specific requirements to defeat. So we saw things like the Joint Strike Fighter, which just decided to try to do everything. They decided it would be stealth, both a fighter and attack aircraft, it would be able to operate from conventional runways, off aircraft carriers, and the ability to take off vertically. It would incorporate every last technology, from advanced phased array radars, a built-in electro-optical targeting system, infrared cameras, a helmet-mounted display, and state-of-the-art electronic warfare suite. And it was going to replace everything, from the Air Force's A-10 and F-16, to the Navy's F-14 and F-A-18, and even the Marines AV-8 Harrier. This plane would do it all, but as we know, the F-35 has had endless problems. And to make matters worse, at the time, there was really no need for it. When you don't know what you want, you just end up wasting a ton of money. And as costs rise, it becomes an easy target to cancel to save money, as there is really no clear reason to have it in the first place. Likely the only reason that the F-35 was never canceled was because, by that point, too much time, effort, and money was put into the project to lose it. Other programs weren't so lucky though. Other projects from that time frame that were cancelled include things like the Airborne Laser, which it costed over $5 billion, the $7 billion spent on the RAH-66 Comanche, the almost $20 billion spent on the XM-1202 mounted combat system which would replace the M1 Abrams and other combat vehicles, just to name a few. 
And I think it should be noted that a lot of these problems the US faces in developing new military technology are also major problems with other countries like China and Russia as well. It's not necessarily a problem limited solely to the US. The difference is, for all the faults of the US government, they are much more open in discussing these problems. We hear about the cancelled projects and the intense debates around costs. There are open and public hearings on plans, costs, and issues of military spending. And they release detailed breakdowns of just how and where they spend nearly every last dollar. Whereas, in Russia and China, instead of open discussions about the problems, many expensive military projects just fade away and disappear silently. There are no public hearings, and there are no detailed military budgets released. They also typically don't release any data or video of full end-to-end -end tests. So, it's possible that some of the systems right now, both in Russia and China's military, might not even work. But, it doesn't necessarily have to. Just the thought that it could work can be enough to deter a potential enemy. So, there are many, many reasons for the seemingly endless string of failures of military projects. But, with the rise of China, the US now has a military rival again. It now has direction. It has a reason and need to focus new systems specifically on defeating a threat. So, a lot of this could change from the decades after the end of the Cold War, of endless, failed military projects.